Hey everyone, welcome back. This is part two of the VR widgets in UE4 playlist. If you haven't seen part one, I'd highly recommend checking out because we're going to build onto the code that we already added in there. So in the last video, we created this and it allows us to switch our interaction hands and which one can interact with widgets. And this video, we're going to look at how we can create a reference point. So at the end of the last video, I showed you that we can't actually use show debug because it doesn't work very well on the Oculus Quest. And also if you build a project, you won't be able to see this if you do production build anyway. So there's no need to use this. We're gonna create something that can work in its place essentially. So the first thing we need to do is we need an actual a reference point. So we're gonna use a sphere for this and we're gonna again add it to our motion controller pawn. And to do that, we're just gonna select default scene route. We're gonna add component, we're gonna type in sphere and we're going to hit enter. So this is going to be our interaction sphere. So we're just going to rename that. If I remember to capital, capitalize the I. Excellent. And then what we need to do is actually reduce this size down to something a bit more manageable. So we're going to get our interaction sphere. Now that's in there, we're going to actually change the scale to 0 0.1. So we can see it. Excellent. And now we need a material, just need something so it stands out. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to use my M arc endpoint. So this is in the virtual reality template, it's just in the virtual reality folder materials and then arc endpoint. So I'm just going to stick that on there just so it's blue, gives us a better color. You can use any material you want for this, but for this example, it's blue. And one of the most important things we need to do is actually go down and go to our collision presets. And we need to change this to UI, otherwise it's not going to work. So we're going to hit compile, save, just as good practice. And now what we need to do is we actually need to build on from our set widget interaction to hand. This will also switch based on which hand you're using, which is extremely useful. What we need to do here is actually get our widget interaction. So we're going to do get, and we need to get our interaction sphere as well. So we also get that. First thing we need to do is drag off our widget interaction and we need to do get world location and get forward vector. So this is basically gonna get our hand position or the widget interaction position and we're gonna update this in a bit. And then the next thing we need to do is from our widget interaction, we need to get last hit result. From here, we're gonna break it and we're gonna go to the drop down. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get our interaction sphere we're going to drag off and we do set world location. So if we tidy this up, cause it's going to get a little bit of a mess. I'm going to put that over here and then I'll move this up just so we got some room. What we need to do now is we need to get our world location and we're going to do a plus. So we're going to add a vector. So what we need to do is get forward vector and we're going to drag off that. We're going to do multiply. So it's just shift and star. And then we actually want to multiply by a float, which we're going to plug into our plus, And then we're going to, we're going to plug that into our new location. So the reason for this is we actually want to use our distance to subtract, or we want to subtract from our distance. So we're basically getting the length of our line trace. So we're going to subtract float by float. I'm going to subtract 10. Otherwise the sphere will actually go past our widget and then we're going to plug that into our multiply. The next step, if I zoom out, is going to be, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to need a branch. So we can't really destroy the the interaction sphere, but what we can do is hide it. So when you're not pointing at the widget itself, you can't see where it is, which is quite good because you don't want it on walls and floors and stuff. So we're going to do set visibility. So we're going to drag off and do set visibility. We want our interaction sphere. Excellent. And then we're going to do the same thing for the false. So we're going to duplicate that. Let's just plug them into the same one and plug it into false. And what we need to do is set the false to true. So now what we're going to do is we're going to control these set visibilities by the distance. So if the distance of our line trace or if the distance of our widget interaction is less than a certain value, we're going to do it so it sets to hidden. And for mine, I just used 
So we do drag off the distance less than equal to, and then I set this to 50. And this worked pretty well for me. So if I go to there, so now we can connect our set world location to our interaction location. And if we hit compile, save, and we jump in, I put that on the left controller. So we're going to plug that into the right because that's what I've got set up as default. And then point at our widget, you can see we actually have our widget interaction. So we can see what we're actually hitting. And um, we can still press the button, which is really cool. And then what we're going to do, we need to set that up for the left hand as well. Okay, so we're going to turn this into a function. This is probably going to break. Actually, I should have done this beforehand. Oh, well, so collapse to function. That actually worked pretty well. Never mind. So I'm going to hit compile, save. We'll call, call this right click, rename. We'll call it update interaction hit location. And double check that everything is fine. And it is. I'm going to hit compile, save, bent. And then all we need to do is control C, control V to the other hand. Could probably plug them both into probably plug them both into one. So now we have our function which is updating our hit result. So I'll go save, compile, and then we jump back in. It's still working, which is excellent. And then if I switch over to the other controller. So I change our hand value to zero. Hit compile and save. And then jump back in. We have our left hand and we're not controlling it with the right. We still can't press anything. But we've got our left. And you can see that's just an easy way of having a visual representation. You can also do the exact same thing and have a, a cylinder mesh come off the hand. If, if you wanted to. For now that's pretty much it. In the next video we'll look at how we can actually start working with widgets and create some widgets in the scene so we can interact with them and have them modify some stuff. We'll disable teleportation in our character and we'll have it so we can turn it back on. That kind of thing. So if you don't want to miss out on that don't forget to like subscribe. If you have any questions just leave them down in the comments below or jump over to the discord. I'll be happy to answer them over there. And a big shout out to my patrons. Until next time stay safe and I'll see you then. Bye.